everybody, and here I am in the Learn PHP section of developphp.com, and down at the bottom, there's quite a few people that are waiting for me to re-release my How to Build a Basic Website Membership System Using PHP and MySQL. This is one of the first tutorials I've ever put up on the site, maybe about two years ago, and it's been there for about a year and a half, but maybe about six months ago, not even that long ago, I took it all down, and a lot of people are requesting for me to please place it back up. And the reason why is because I made a, a long 30 part series that was involving Flash and ActionScript 3 in a header file that was the login mechanism and logout mechanism and it was it took care of some other things but a lot of people were having trouble with dealing with Flash and ActionScript 3 in regards to PHP and MySQL. So I think the fact that we had a Flash header in that series that was calling out to PHP and MySQL is what was making a lot of people have problems with that series. So this one is going to be a lot more basic and it'll be better for extendability for you because you'll have a better grasp of what's going on because there won't be any uh, Flash or ActionScript 3 involved and we're just going to stick to PHP, MySQL, and CSS and of course HTML. And it's not going to be anywhere near 30 parts. Okay, now after your database is created you have two options. You can create your tables in that database and manipulate the database using PHP scripts which is a little more advanced or you can just work in PHP my admin. With this series I'm going to opt to go into PHP my admin because I think it's a lot easier for beginners to grasp what's going on using PHP my admin and also a lot of people had problems with the create table script that we had in the last series because their either their connection data was wrong or their syntax was wrong in their script various things will make it not work if you go into PHP my admin it's sure to create the table and work for you so you can knock out those kind of problems occurring with the create table script and everything like that will be one step past that with no worries okay so once we're inside we're gonna click on the left on the new database that we created click it and it's going to say create new table on a database. Oh, I'm going to give this table a name that's inside of our new database and let's call it members. Number of fields, 12. You can give it as many fields as you want to hold as much data as you need, but I'm just going to show 12 for this example, which is going to hold their email, the password, their their bio, their sign up date, their last login date or whatever. press go and now we can start populating each field to say what it's going to be labeled and to also signify which type of fields they are and have default values or whatever the first one's going to be ID and that's going to be integer type and we're going to make sure it's auto increment that way each new person that joins it auto increments that ID number and you don't have to try and keep filling in new unique IDs it'll do it automatically this is going to be the primary key or the primary index now the next one is going to be username so make that one say username make it varchar 255 I'm going to make all of my varchars 255 because that happens to be the limit on a varchar field anyway. Set yours to whatever you think the max value would need be for that field. Now the next one is going to be, but the max is 255. Bytes. So 255 characters are bytes. Next one's going to be country, then city. Actually, let's put state here state or province whatever you want to have it be city is going to be the one after state then we're going to have bio which is going to be their about me section where they can describe themselves then we're going to have their email field where the email is going to be stored then their password field where their password will be stored and it's going to be hashed for security maybe at the end in the last video of this series I'm, I'm going to discuss discuss security pretty in depth so you can know what to watch out for in your website. Let's make this one last login. That way you can research on your own in your own time to become fully aware. Let's call this one account type. 
and let's call this one email activated because we want to make sure they activate through email so once we have all of those labeled let's go ahead and finish their types country is going to be var char 255 state is going to be var char 255 city same thing and var char means an assortment of different characters whether it be spaces punctuation symbols letters or numbers that just means it could have all kind of various characters bio is going to be text because we need that to be a little longer than 255 bytes and I think text is 10,000 bytes its length and value or its length is 10,000 bytes I believe I could be wrong about that but if you need more than 10,000 bytes 10,000 characters or what have you use medium text or long text long text will give you the most but text is usually good enough because it gives you a, a good 10,000 I think 10,000 bytes that can be gone into that field 10,000 bytes that can be placed into that field email is going to be varchar 255 password is also going to be varchar 255 and remember that's going to be hashed so sign up date is going to be date time that way it records the date they join and the time of day now this one's going to be date time as well this is going to be updated every time they log in again after they log in the first time you want to update this field last login to show when their last login date and time was account type is going to be enum and email activated will also be enum now for enum you have to set values so you put in actually down at the bottom usually it shows you what kind of values and format you need to put in that so this one I'm gonna have account type I'm gonna leave that ABC we'll say A is for normal users B will give for users who are have a little have maybe more privileges than the A type and C they'll have all privileges so they can do all things on the site so you can have different levels of account types to give people different options of what they can see when they log in what they get and things like that email activate is going to be a similar thing but that's only going to be two values and they're going to be sort of like boolean zero and one zero meaning false one meaning true so when they join it's going to be zero so let's give that default let's see where is this default right here default as defined zero so we're gonna have a default value of zero so when they join they're gonna be set to zero there and when they act when they get the activation email in their email inbox they click it they get activated then we make a script that changes this to a one that way they're fully activated they can log in and do all the stuff on the site they need to do now last thing here is what we need to do is set the email field to unique let's go over here to email set that to unique because we only want to have one of each email we basically you don't want duplicates of emails in your database if you're gonna have this kind of system you don't want somebody to join with the same email five times okay I think we're all set everything looks good so now we're gonna go down to the bottom and press save and there's your table but pretty much at this point we're done in PHP and my admin and we should not have to return unless we want to go back in and do custom things maybe add fields or whatever okie dokie so creating the main storage mechanism for the whole site is pretty much set up and what we're gonna do is continue in a part two where we're gonna create the script that's gonna make sure that we can connect to that database table because if we don't connect to that database table successfully then we can't go any further in the system so once we make sure we connect move at a nice pace because we're sure that we're connected and we can just script everything out in PHP using MySQL queries and we're gonna use a little CSS and HTML to structure out the website and make it look the way we want okay so if you're enjoying this series meet me in part two